Thanks for staying with us now. Referencing Scientia Insight, a research publication website, despite being an oil producing country, Nigeria heavily relies on imported petroleum products due to the inadequate refining capacity of its domestic refineries. Now, in the third quarter of 2022, the oil sector's contribution to the country's GDP reached 6.33%, indicating that the oil sector contributes in no small measure to the country's GDP despite several challenges um, faced in the country or in the industry. Despite the contribution of this oil sector, there have been various challenges uh, ravaging the industry, some of which include oil theft and pipeline vandalism, corruption, lack of infrastructure, environmental degradation, frequent oil spills, gas flaring, and improper waste management practices have also resulted in pollution, deforestation, and demand to, or rather damage rather to the aquatic ecosystem affecting local communities and biodiversity. Um, it is ironic that oil, which is supposed to be a blessing to the nation through mismanagement has um, caused so much chaos and confusion in Nigeria. And today we're asking, what is the role of this petroleum industry, right, in nation building? And please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 1 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow after one of the hashtag Wayshow. So I'll bring in um, Basi in a minute, Andre. I just want to hear your thoughts, Uti. Um, when we say petroleum industry, right, um, has it really helped in developing our nation? It's a double-edged sword. It's a blessing and a curse. Mm. Has it brought us a lot of money? Absolutely. Has it then allowed us to become a single-income economy? Absolutely. There are many ways you can look at it. Now we're heavily reliant on petroleum. We've gotten to a point where all our FX seems to be tied to this one thing. Today, even when you look at the way we have treated it, our focus has been about pulling it out of the ground and selling it. It has even so blinded us that even to continue refining for our own personal use, right? We didn't even achieve that, mm -hmm. right? So it almost was like, you know when you're taking medicine and the medicine is sweet and you keep taking it because you've forgotten that it's actually supposed to be fixing something and you're just enjoying the taste of it. So it becomes a one-sided thing mm. and then eventually becomes detrimental. Mm -hmm. That for me is what it is. So does it have a lot of positive aspects or impacts on it? Yes. Um, has it put Nigeria on the world stage? Yes. Has it given us a lot of income? Yes. Has it increased our income per capita? Yes. I mean, all of these things. But then, you could also talk about the negative sides. Mm. But we're talking today about the positive. Let us try. Let's try and Let's find try the positive impact, right? <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Let's try to stay there, please. Glory, you want to say something quickly before I bring in our guest? I mean, I, I don't think I'll add anything to what Uti just said. You know, she just really took off the words of my mouth and even more. It's just everything she said, honestly. Okay. It is. All right, so let me bring in our guest. Andre Bassi is the managing director and the CEO of Ex uh, Axiom <laughs> Onshore, a company with over... 10 years experience in the Nigerian oil and gas industry providing Turkey business advisory services to indigenous and multinational energy companies. Uh, he holds a BSc, a BSc degree in industrial relations and personal management and successfully oversaw the um, turn around and profitability of a failing downstream energy service, uh, services provider in Lagos within a 14 month period. He is an active and leading participant in citizen engagement and advocacy programs, um, seminars, and talks around or across the country. And he's very passionate about advocating um, technology in governance. Now, he's joined us live in studio. Thank you so much for joining us, Andre. Thank you. How about you? No murder your company name. Uh, yeah, is it Axiom or is it Axiom? It's Axiom. It's Axiom, okay. Yeah, indeed, I, 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 <laughs> I apologize. No but this one that we're all wearing black today, we came, we came for this government. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm 
I'm, I'm, I'm happy, don't worry. <laughs> but, but again, I mean, this is a, it's an interesting conversation. It's just mm. happening that is now really apt because you were supposed to come on the show, I think, two weeks ago, yeah, two but weeks something back. happened. Yeah, yeah. We had to cancel. So it's almost like, okay, this is the right time. The right timing. You know, right timing for the conversation because, again, um, we know what is happening with the petroleum industry, right? We know the capacity, like Uti has rightly said, is almost like a curse and a blessing for us, right? But we still believe strongly that there's so much that can happen if we get it right, right? I mean, so if you first of all want to give a summation of what is happening with the petroleum industry, the announcement of the president saying that the subsidy is off and all of that, maybe you just give us a small background, you know, what you think is happening and, you know, your own two cents on that. <laughs> so are we talking about the good news only? Ah, uh, let's talk about both actually. Okay, yeah. so I'll just give you a brief. Um, you know, when it comes to the petroleum industry, we are overly focused on the downstream sector because that's where it directly affects the oh, everyday so. Nigerian. Mm -hmm. So um, you allow the upstream guys to sit pretty as if they are not a part of the industry. Mm -hmm. But I'll just give you a brief. Um, Nigeria has or before now we've had the uh, capacity production capacity or refining capacity of about 450,000 barrels a day um, I think about 200 in um, um, Port Harcourt we have 125 in Wari mm -hmm. uh, Kaduna has 110 or thereabout mm -hmm. so combined you know we have that capacity a little below what Dangote has about 200 different Unfortunately, um, those refineries, as we know, became moribund. Mm -hmm. They don't work. So it exposes us to the challenge of taking the crude out and bringing back just three products. Yeah. Now, each barrel of crude has the capacity of giving about 17 different products. So we only get to get back three. And we lose out from about uh, 14 or thereabout. Okay, so that's just a brief on where we are today. Now, um, because we've been importing this product into the country, of course it affects our exchange rates. NNPC or petroleum uh, products already accounts for about 95% of, you know, um, servicing our budgets. So we depend heavily on um, petroleum to be able to survive as a country. So whenever anything pricks the petroleum sector, we will all cry because it trickles down to even the rice, mm -hmm. and Every the gary, single thing. anything you find. So. Um, yes, it has been a blessing in a way over the years and um, because of our negligence, it has now become more of a cost to us than a blessing. Now, this is not a bad thing to say that it cannot be fixed, it definitely can be fixed and I'm sure um, what we are going through now, we should have done it a long time ago. It's unfortunate. You should have just allowed those 10 years ago <laughs> to just remove the subsidy. Yeah. By now, everybody would have eased it off nicely. Ah, well, because, you see, we weren't quite ready to accept never be um, the pain mm -hmm. that comes with removing the subsidy. Now, it's like you um, enjoying some sort of um, free money, mm. and the day it is removed, you feel the pain because the reality of where you are today suggest that this must be accounted for. So we have to account for all these things we've been doing all these years. So that's where we are today. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. You know, it's interesting he mentioned something around the, all the refineries, because I saw an interview when Dangote's refinery was launched. Otedola was saying that they had actually bought, you know, they came together to buy um, the refinery and mm -hmm. some magumago happened mm -hmm. and it, it was taken away and today see what Dangote has put up, you mm -hmm. know. Um, imagine if they had allowed them to um, what's it continue called? To continue with the process of mm -hmm. acquiring it and now running it up. And he was saying that, you know, government had no business in in, in, in business, right? They yeah. should just leave um, those um, what's it called infrastructures and all of that for private companies to run yeah. you know do you agree with that right if you if you if we if we want to look towards maybe like solutions right now to the current challenges that we are having mm -hmm. because we still need all those refineries yeah. despite the fact that they are not working now mm -hmm. if we had investors coming to say they want to take over those refineries mm -hmm. how would that impact if those refineries are working would it change some of this hardship that we're already facing when it comes to you know putting fuel in our cars well there are different models to refining First of all, um, you have the actual refineries which, you know, have the capacity of about 100,000 or thereabouts. Then you also have modular refineries that can be in little clusters. Let's say three of us own marginal fields for now. 
and those fields had probably the capacity of maybe 5,000 barrels per day. And instead of me to go and site my refinery in probably, uh, let's say the location is in Lagos, so uh, there's no need for me to site the refinery in Akiti. I might as well site it here so that feedstock is Lagos there. And it allows you to refine locally for the consumption of the people you have around you. Now, Otsedola was very correct because at the time, I mean, during uh, the time of President uh, Obasanjo, there was a consortium um, set up called, I think, the Blue or Red Star Consortium. It was the uh, an emergency company. So that company was supposed to um, acquire all the refineries. Unfortunately, they didn't go through the Bureau of Public uh, um, Procurement uh, properly, so everybody thought it was a scam because we didn't quite trust the government. But then, um, in the last 20 years, Nigeria has been suffering or struggling with the petroleum industry bill. Mm -hmm. Now, that bill was supposed to unbundle the entire petroleum sector so that it allows um, um, individual players to come into the industry. Now, what would that do? First of all, um, when this uh, bill was passed um, last year, or 2021 rather, by uh, President uh, Buhari, yeah, we all embraced it because it was really something we've been waiting for. Now, that bill allows two things. One, it allows the um, entire petroleum industry to be divided into two sectors. It was being regulated and managed by the Department for Petroleum Resources, just one uh, parastatal. But when the industry bill became an act, um, the petroleum sector had two regulators. One upstream, the upstream um, um, commission, and also um, the uh, downstream, uh, downstream and midstream mm. petroleum uh, regulatory agency, which seeks to only cover regulatory prices, importation of fuel, and what have you. Now, as soon as this um, um, subsidy is out, what it gives um, 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 opportunity to is allowing individual players, if you have money, come into the picture import your own fuel, come there, let's compete in prices. So when we compete in prices, the law of demand and supply will take its course. Okay. And then... We'll Not with that go to inside that game. But let me take it. <laughs> you know what you did with sugar? Not with him in that game. Ah, ah, don't even try it. <laughs> let's take a break. Uti, I think Uti has a question. We'll come back and uh, we'll take more questions. All right, thanks for staying with us there. If you just tuned in, we we're discussing nation building and we we're asking what the role of the petroleum industry would look like, you know, especially developing and building our nation. And we have with us Andre Bassi. Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 01 803 4663. You can also tweet at us at Way Show Africa 1 with the hashtag Way Show. Let's see. So, <laughs> we are left us on a cliffhanger just before the book. <laughs> she mentioned the dab, dab, dab. So, Dangote, right? Uh, we know that he can't meet demand. And I love that you talked about the regulators. Because, in my humble opinion, I think that the marketers are standing on our necks. And somebody needs to stand on their necks. And I know you are in the industry, so you probably have a different opinion, mm. right? <laughs> because, yes, that, like I said, da, da, da. But the, the, the question for me is, now that we've found ourselves in this situation, we can't, we can't turn back the hand of time. We can't reverse it. We are moving forward. We've seen the hardship, the toil. What is the role that the regulators are going to play? How do we make this price as cost efficient? If you were listening but when the show started, I was talking about how can we make this price as lean as possible? What are the things that are inflating that price today? So yes, the FX conversation is on one side, mm -hmm. right? But how do we make sure that this pump price, from the perspective of a Nigerian who by 200 or even 2,000% doesn't trust this government, how do we start to make this process, maybe not even transparent, but at least give me a sense that I'm not being duped every time I get to the pump? Okay, let me break your heart. You see, when any commodity, I want you to see refined petroleum product as a commodity. It could be Gary, it could be anything, yeah? Now, when any commodity is deregulated, you cannot 
control the price. Now, it's impossible for any of the regulators. They've just After, sat on so, the so, why are you saying control the price? I'm saying, how do you make it as cost efficient? So, I'm going to the pump today. Somebody has told me 488 or 500 or whatever, depending on what the NMPC has said, wherever you are in Nigeria. Mm. I don't have any marker to say, is this the best possible price? Like you said, if I deregulate, nobody should be setting price. Mm -hmm. The most you can do is tell me, here is the margin. If, you're, if your landing cost is this, you can't go beyond 20% or 30%, right? Mm -hmm. But So that's what I'm saying. It's not about setting the price. Mm -hmm. It's just, I don't want to feel like I'm being robbed every time I go to fill up my tank. <laughs> well, that, that cannot change, un unfortunately. So I, I, don't, I don't want to tell you something that uh, will make you happy. Now, allow me to land on the point I wanted to make before you um, um, came in. Now, NNPC Limited runs as a business. No. It's no longer NNPC as the government. Mm -hmm. Now, the prices you saw on NNPC platform, Limited. NNPC Limited, is them putting their prices as a profit-making venture. Yeah. Now, if you are able to buy from NNPC, Good for you, which sells are probably 488 in Lagos and a couple of other differences in the other parts. Now, that doesn't stop other entities from fixing the prices at what they think they would make their profit from. Exactly my point. So, I say I'm sorry to disappoint you. That question. No, so that's what I mean. You know, you're not using my point because the fact is. NFC said 488, and all the other marketers went with the price. I don't know what their margins are. I don't know what they've paid. Yeah. They literally, one guy, one company said, this is what we're selling, and everybody mm -hmm. just went for it. And that's, that's the guy, because NNPC is actually the lead company in this industry mm -hmm. when it comes to petroleum services. So it is believed that they might yeah. have the best price possible. Yeah, that's the belief, that they might have mm -hmm. the best price possible. I remember that I said that I don't want to go to the pump and live on the belief. I want to be clear <laughs> that somebody... So what is like you asking, what is asking like, you to say, please, let me just break it down. How much did they import? You will be market. <laughs> how much do you bring for... Because I think you could be a little bit of I mean, NFC is an old government company mm. who are not supposed to be the most efficient. Yes. So if, him, if a marketer had come and said, you know what, the price is 400, I'll say, okay, this guy has been commercial all the while, so I want to believe he's efficient, and I want to believe that he's not stabbing me in the eye. Mm -hmm. But then the NMPC just picks a number, and everybody runs with it, and your costs all the same. Mm -hmm. So Unfortunately, that, that margin or those chains of margins have not been disclosed ever. To the public to see. She said that. See, yeah. I don't like the market as that's you right. when I said it, but you <laughs> see. <laughs> Let me learn on that, yeah. So, unfortunately, we don't all have that um, in the public space. Now, maybe over time, as other investors begin to come into the space, uh, maybe that may be clear. Um, I would put this as a normal business entity. You know, every regular business may not tell you the back end of, you know, their business in terms of profit and margin, what the markups would be and all that. So think of it as a business in that light. No, okay. But if we have, mm. if I'm going to answer a bit of that question, we know what the standard rates are for in terms of voyage, in terms of, um, what I mean by voyage, I mean yes, the freight, no. No. Uh, in terms of, uh, we know uh, landing cost of, cost of uh -uh. Or, you know, in all the stuff. Yeah, you can put that, but the actual cost that comes from uh, uh, the difference between what NNPC pays as, um, as subsidy and a couple of other things, unfortunately, uh, it's not in the public But space. then shouldn't the regulator be setting a margin? Because that means that as a marketer, if no, I decide to sell that imagine now, you cannot, because if you set the yes, margin, you they will come back to the subsidy. No, 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 Okay, yeah, I think I think it's a good feedback from a good Nigerian like you. So, <laughs> which I believe he's just trying to protect her pocket. No, 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 I will sell my own price two hundred fifty naira. Trust me. Well, you're welcome to the game. The only thing is that you see, the only thing is that the only problem I have with that is that if they will let us. Uh, import clear goods and everything bribe free. You see, that is bribing and all that that increases the money. Well, there are certain, there's, there's, there's certain, there's certain um, 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 words I may not be able to use, so I'll allow you to use this word. I'm about, telling you that your controller general said he's setting up 3.2 billion naira e system to end 
$3.2 billion uh, e-system to end corruption yeah. and to make sure that the system is transparent. Mm -hmm. If they will give... So let me tell you something. Let me tell you what brings the prices of things high in this country. Mm -hmm. A builder, a real estate person, a realtor will build a property. How much will he pay, first of all, the omonile? How much will he bribe all the government yeah, people? All the so the, the, yeah. These are also all those factors comes mm -hmm. to the consumer. Like, maybe in a pity us. That's what Uti is saying. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Strip off all these bottlenecks, mm -hmm. and we will see the exact cost that this thing comes to. Nobody is saying we should not be profitable as a business. But don't, don't, don't profit at my own death. Mm -hmm. Because if all of us die, who will buy the petrol? Now, this is where, <laughs> this is where the PIA comes in. Now, the PIA has already paid provision for all these um, 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 things you have mentioned. Mm -hmm. So when, like I said, when other players come into this industry... That's what I'm trying to tell you, that that other player uh, could yeah. not work. <laughs> not <laughs> allow kind you of system. See, We've seen it will allow you to see how you can see all this in between um, um, problems. Andre, and can I tell you yeah. why I'm saying mm -hmm. that other players might not work in this country? Let me tell you something, right? Even with the government, we've seen how they have set up some kind of structures or policies that continue to enrich certain kinds of businesses mm -hmm. and businessmen. You cannot have a thriving economy like that. Mm -hmm. You must give everybody the opportunity to be able to become, if tomorrow I have investors and they are willing to give me money to trust me to bring in this business and start up a petroleum uh, business. I should be able to run my business freely without the fear of somebody coming to monopolize the market. So that's the point. You cannot have that one. So not just leave all those independent whatever. We are just, we are their mercy. Let us just start fasting and praying that God will touch their hearts and they will give us a decent price to buy this petrol from. Okay. Or else we relocate. Glory. I'm not relocating. Sorry, figure it out. It's getting hot in there. I'll be really so. Um. So my question is, um, with the removal of subsidy, I mean, everyone is anticipating that things will get better. Um, some of the funds that were diverted towards subsidizing the importation of fuel will be used to grow the economy. I share the same sentiment. But then again, we know Nigeria, when it's negative, it's easy to feel the impact. But when it's positive, it's almost like it becomes slower. So what do you think? I would like to also know your thoughts with respect to that. Do you think the removal of this subsidy really in the nearest future will start seeing positive impact of this step taken? Well, I, I would say on paper, yes. How we have, um, what the plan looks like on the PIA allows um, um, most of these monies that were channeled to, to subsidy payments to go into other aspects of the society or the sectors mm. like um, healthcare, education, infrastructure, and, you know, and stuff like that. <laughs> However, there's still that gap of trust. Mm. Now, Nigerians are already bond over the years, so we don't even trust you when you say that these monies would be appropriated for this reason. So um, that's why that question would always hang over the necks of every government official, everybody who is in this space, that we do actually do what you say you do with this money now until we see those things work in actual sense or in reality. Um, that is when I can say, okay, your question has been answered. But for now, it's still very tentative and it works perfectly on paper. So look, let's come back to this topic, right? The role of petroleum industries in nation building. I remember driving to, I think it was Houston. Now, did they get a final in Abu? Yes. Oh, my God. Ah! Mm. I was speechless. <laughs> First of all, it was in the night. So the place, you could tell, I, I actually just knew that I had entered a different territory. Mm. Like, the place was so, you know, so many beautiful structures. The roads, if you see the, the, um, the kinds of roads on that... I saw the... Thank you. So just help me to summarize the English. Yeah, I was trying I to saw the money. Go. I saw the money. Yeah. Right? So if we want to really say that what nation building would look like with petroleum money, what should Nigeria look like? Well, we should look like Qatar, we should look like Dubai, we should look like all these other countries who have adequately deployed, you know, the benefits or the gains of, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the product Oil proceeds. into infrastructure. Because what you have seen mostly is infrastructure. That is what most companies use their, their, their profits from petroleum uh, to, to do. So let's just even streamline to host communities. Let's not say the whole Nigeria. Let's say maybe Delta State or Vyelsa, any of these places that have. Now, um, the law allows every operating company 
to give up 3% of their profits into community development. And where you decide not to, there's a penalty you pay. Then the community, in turn, have the responsibility of also protecting the investment so that it becomes a good partnership. But most companies would rather pay that penalty than putting that 3% down. Because maybe a company that is flaring gas, for instance, it's more, it's more expensive for you to be able to compress the gas bottle it and sell, rather they would flare it because it's cheaper for the operations. So um, most of them actually do give the 3%, but even we are our own enemies because the leaders of those environments save the money, build you know their mansions, get yeah, all they can, build one bubble for them to can all they get, and you know, and just give a little to the society. So I wouldn't say per se that um, um, the government has done well in terms of providing infrastructure that should come with the petroleum industry. However, it's both sides because the community, by law, already has something that comes to them. But unfortunately, um, they don't use it. So you've just opened another kind of worms because with every law, enforcement, without enforcement, a law is useless. It's, okay. it's words on paper. Mm -hmm. So if you continuously see that something isn't working, right? So we're taking away the subsidy today. Mm. We are hoping, hoping, as we hope as Nigerians, that we're going to see the benefits, like we were drove into, and she saw the money. <laughs> we don't know yet whether we're going to see the money because all the other places that suck up money, nothing has been trimmed. But let's not digress. Mm -hmm. It is clear that even that 3%, who has gone back to assess whether 3% is enough? Who has looked at the profits to say, you know what, this 3% actually should be 10%? Who has looked at the impact of gas flaring to say, you know what, if you're going to flare the gas, here's a 50% penalty. Who makes it less attractive to flare the gas and to give more money? And then where is the law that says, how are we going to track and trace this money? I mean, when you say these things, I, mean, I hear you, but all I'm hearing is more and more problems. And it means that, that we just do things half-baked. I agree. Thank you for agreeing. I agree. I totally <laughs> agree with you. Now, when I actually read the uh, Petroleum Industry Act, mm. there are so many gray areas. Is that in our own document? So many gray areas. I, I, so I do not know if we even have... Them. Yeah, I do <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not speaking on that point now. So I do not know if we, <laughs> if we even have the capacity to be able to carry out you know, most of this thing. Like you rightly said, now, even if you deploy 3%, how do I account for 3% when the companies are even unable to declare what their real profits are? Mm -hmm. So how do I know what 3% is? Now, even if then I said, okay, 3% comes to which unit of the society? Is there an association Is there um, um, that is accountable to the people to see? It's not enough to just throw in one ball hole. It's not enough to throw in, uh, okay, I put roof on a, on a secondary school or something that is as basic as that. Mm -hmm. But... Um, it still falls down to the fact that that act has to be um, readjusted, revisited, so that we will see the impact of that particular clause in the mm -hmm. act. For now, we are not able to maximize you know, the potential of that act because we don't have uh, the capacity to do so. So there's really no enforcement um, following that order to the letter. Who is supposed to enforce it? Like I said, there are two regulators now. Mm. Okay, so so the yeah, there's the a downstream, downstream on the upstream. Yeah. Okay. So when it comes to production, when it comes to exploration, production, and all that, so it's the upstream. Now, the downstream, of course, comes to the time frame importation, mm. sadly. Hopefully the importation will end, mm -hmm. then uh, you know, and uh, refining and what have you. Yeah. So I was just going to ask you that uh, because the president had given a statement that he's commanding all the service chiefs that they should go and end oil theft in the country. <laughs> Again, the thing you know, I don't understand it because oil theft is not me and you that we steal oil. Mm -hmm. Oil is not something I can put in this cup and hide under my blouse and go. Mm -hmm. I have to, I have to have money to be able to steal oil. So I saw the model for Dubai one time. I remember that report that came out. Remember how the guy, the shake with pride, they show you the liter. He said to the very last drop yes. of oil, mm -hmm. they know where everything they pattern. Mm -hmm. Please, is it possible for us to have that? Because again, we are speaking to the point that you said they are not able to declare profit. They are not able to do this. I mean, if we have those kind of structures, I believe that's what Dangote that is supposed to put it there. Because mm -hmm. if you go and put the the archaic uh, system, they will still rob him there and the, com the company will go comatose, right? <laughs> I am believing that he has a modern technology to be able to monitor to the last drop of the, the barrel, right? Mm -hmm. So how do, we, how do we start to 
probably think um, um, think about the restructuring of the petroleum industry to say, okay, we need to be able to build up this kind of structure. Because if Custom is telling me he's spending $3.2 billion just for e-system, it is where. I believe that <laughs> that e-system, we must see it, <laughs> that it is real e-system, right? So, I mean, what do we do, you know, if you want to, like, wrap it up nicely yeah. to the petroleum industry that would help us to say, you know what, I think we're on the right track towards, you know, um, proper structures that in the next 20 years, 50 years from now, we'll see, you know. I think first things first, it took away from the hands of the government entirely. And NPC Limited. It's still government. It's still government. Thank Let's you. face it. Yeah. So, um, I mean, stakeholders, there's the Ministry of Petroleum and also the Ministry of Finance. So they are both government entities. But to, to see what form of uh, monitoring system we can use, it starts from the upstream. Like I said, when we started this conversation, we leave them alone and we let them sit pretty. But that's where the problem starts from. Because if we continually use the same model where ships just go uh, offshore, carry these products, go to wherever, re um, refine it, bring it back, it doesn't work. Now, we can't account for even what our consumption is mm. in Nigeria. And mm. is today is today's They refuse to tell us because they want to uh, keep using it to collect yeah. subsidy. <laughs> Go ahead. So, that's the thing. So, if we put in technology, mm. technology makes life easier. Mm. You know, it makes everything easier. So, the, 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 the picture you painted about Dagoti and Kuwait and all these other countries that mm. monitor, they deploy technology. They know how many, the capacity of each wellhead. Mm -hmm. And they know that this wellhead can produce X amount of uh, crude. And when this crude comes in, it can be refined to X amount of refined product. Mm -hmm. So it's simple mathematics. Thank so you, my brother. Can, you can tell. Yeah. But we don't want to do that. Because we, we want to continue to eat the system dry. <laughs> he doesn't want to say Don't worry, we help him. I'm not going to say that. I'm here. What can they do for me? I'm here to say, what can I do for you? I'm happy. I'm happy. That's your opinion. Basti. Hey, Andre. I really love the conversation. But unfortunately, we ran out of time. But I get you. Technology. We would have to bring you back. Thank you so much for joining us. I okay. mean, what a good conversation. Even though <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like running away. Right. <laughs> Money is a very emotive thing. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Thank you, Glory. Thank you, Ruti. Thank you so much, Andre. Yeah, now, before we go, I'm sure you follow us across all our social media handles at Ratio Africa. You can interact with us further. Drop a comment and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. Our vision is for a country that grows what it eats and produces uh, what it consumes. It is for a country that no longer has to import petroleum products and develop a lucrative petrochemical industry. And this was from former uh, president, uh, vice president, um, Yemi Shibajo. We'll see you guys on Monday. Hopefully, we'll have you to come to the studio. <laughs> Enjoy.